What's up, VC? I've been away for a little while. All right, this is my 100th episode. Super stoked about it. Um, stoked about it. Um, I filmed one already, posted it on YouTube, and no one can watch because the music I had playing in the background. So that was a bummer. So I've been lagging on doing another one, and I have no space in my phone on top of that. So I only had like two minutes left on my SD card. And then it finally filled that up, just taking pictures of my dog. And so now it's using the memory on my phone, but I want to go get another SD card and I'll, I'll be posting videos like crazy again. So, while I have about 32 minutes of space, <laughs> this could be one episode. Anyways, uh, throw some vinyl, show you guys some vinyl, throw some vinyl, whatever. And um, right off the back, what's playing right now, this came out uh, on RSD Black Friday. Last Black Friday, RSD, I'm pretty sure. The Herbie Hancock Trio, and hopefully this video doesn't <laughs> get muted or get hidden because of what I'm playing. Great album right here. Um, for some reason, just picked it out to put on this morning. Big Herbie Hancock fan. He's actually coming to Texas to play Austin in September, so I definitely want to check that out. But uh, great album. If you haven't picked this one up, and it's I pro it's probably not too pricey. Definitely swoop this one. If you already have it, put it on again. Gosh damn, it's so good. Um, and I knew it's good. It's just been a while since I've listened to it. It's like, you know, maybe a month. But it's blowing me away still. So, I thought, just talk about, I did get some new, a few new albums. Still waiting on my UHQR. Told, it's, it's like torture. Danny got his. Vinyl Me Please got his. It's like, Kevin. So it's like, I'm, I'm, I think I had a dream about me filming this saying how I'm not going to get my UHQR. I'm getting my last. So either way, it's totally strange. So it'll get here eventually. And it's really weird. It's totally it's deja vu. It's happening. So hopefully that comes here. Um, I did get a couple goodies in the mail, though. So uh, it's holding me over. It's the, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's like you didn't get the pure heroin, but you got the cheap stuff. Totally joking. All right, so let's just throw some, let's throw some, show some heat. Lau Mays, who's he? He's a keyboard player for Pat Metheny. Awesome album right here. And you would think it's on ECM. No, it's on Geffen. And then who's executive producer? Pat Metheny. Who's a guitar player on this? Bill Frizzell. So just a monster album. Nobody talks about it, I feel like. It's Lau Mays. The album, I don't even know the name of the album, actually. Oh, just Lau Mays. It's awesome. My favorite song on here is called Slink, which is kind of hard to find to stream, I think. I think they do have it on YouTube now, though. But anyways, super good album. Definitely check it out. One of my favorite albums, just in general, but I've been listening to it a lot this last year. Crosswinds by Billy Cobham. I already had one. I got a really good version in this one. I still got rid of my old one, so um, and just been listening to this. The... Uh, this whole album is crazy good. John Abercrombie on guitar on this one. Every musician's a beast on here. But, um, all of side one's crazy. And then on side two, there's a song called Heather with a really cool trippy trombone trumpet solo, which I thought was saxophone for a long time. <laughs> Speaking of John Abercrombie, here's this. Cool album. This is an original pressing right here, and I actually got a reissue. And I was kind of the reissue claims it's on 180 gram, so I wanted to hear the difference. And you can kind of tell the difference. I'm pretty sure the re the original ECMs have this logo for ECM. <clears throat> the reissues, because these are both printed in Germany, so I feel like the reissues have ECM very plain. These sound really good, though. These reissues sound really, really good. So, again, the edges are kind of bumpy on this one. What's up with that stunty? You need to call the place. All right. I'm going to try to move quickly through these because I don't want to waste too much space on my phone. All right. Ralph Towner. Solstice. This album is cr Solstice, Sound, and Shadows. The killer album. I got this for four bucks. Four bucks or three bucks, I bet you. Three bucks. It's one of my favorite albums right now. So good, Ralph Towner. I'm waiting on uh, another one of his 
album, so I don't want to talk too much about it, but it's a good one. It'll be a, it's supposed to come here tomorrow. I was hoping it would come today, but nope. Since we're on the ACM trip, Gary Burton Quintet. Well, it's the Gary Burton Quintet with Everhard Weber. But it's got Pat Metheny on 12 string, uh, Mick Goodrick, I'm pretty sure, not Nick. Mick Goodrick on guitar, just ripping. You can find this out for cheap. This is an original copy I got, Steel Seal off of eBay. I'm super stoked about that. But I have three copies of this. One that I got for $2.89 back in the day. Still plays really good. And then I got a sealed one, had it kind of a little foul on the pressing, but still good. But this was, third one was a charm. Super stoked. Okay. Super happy to finally get this right here. I've been trying to get this for a long time now. The soundtrack to Atomic Blonde. Uh, not one of my favorite movies. It's a great movie. But... I was more blown away. It was a combination of the movie, but the soundtrack was super good. And I, you know, I mean, eighty. It's a full on '80s soundtrack. But between this and Stranger Things, you don't even need another '80s record in your collection. You got them all. And uh, it's a double LP. It has a few of the score parts from the person who did the soundtrack, who Mar uh, Manson helped out. Marilyn Manson helped out on one song, one or maybe two songs. I'm pretty sure one song. And it's on uh, this cool atomic pink. But yeah. They had this a long time ago and I was going to get it and I lagged and it got swooped and then this thing was kind of hard to find and they finally got another copy in the store so I swooped it up. Super stoked. Big into soundtracks. Okay. Here's some of the other new stuff I picked up. I had, uh, ordered this a while back. The Monk and Pow Alto. Just listened to it all the way through last night. It's a great album. Very impressed with this. Um, I mean, it's a no-brainer. It's Thelonious Monk. We share the same initials. It's pretty cool. But Pow Alto, that's actually where my stepdad overdosed on heroin and passed away. Not to be super dark, bring her downer here, but um, either way, that's my connection to Pow Alto. My dad lived in San Francisco, which is a little ways up the road from here. <laughs> but anyways... Uh, the story's pretty cool behind it, how this kid who was a senior at the school put on the concert. Uh, this janitor said he would get the piano tuned if they gave him permission to record it. They don't even have this guy's name, and that's what you get to hear on this album. And it's really good. It's a really good performance. The backstory goes that Monk actually was pretty broke at the time, and he was trying to squeeze in as much work as possible, so it was like an extra show in between. And, the, and they only charged 500 bucks, you can believe that. My, I mean, I mean that's insane to think that Monk was only getting. I mean, and now that's not a bad for the night worth of work. That's not bad. There it was you know, each person was getting like one twenty five, I think one twenty. But <laughs> that's insane. But the cool thing is Monk did it, and a lot of people didn't think he was gonna show up, and then he showed up. The, the kid had to pick him up in a van. They had the little green room. One of the classrooms was a green room, but uh, so it's kind of a. Cool backstory on the whole situation, and then they kill it on the performance. So super good. Okay, was super happy to get this. Uh, back at the Chicken Shack, Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith's a beast. He's amazing. But you know who else is amazing? Kenny Burrell, who plays guitar on this. So that was like a no-brainer to get. Um, I love Jimmy Smith, and I love Kenny Burrell. And this is just a cool album cover. Look at that. Chilling with his dog next to the Chicken Shack. So anyways, I love my dog. I just love album cover. I mean, this that is a cool-ass album cover. Definitely gets a 10 on the album cover. And the name, Back in the Chicken Shack. Sure, anyways. But, yes, this is a really good album. There's only four songs, but they are killers. All right. Let's see if I can try to get these a little organized here. All right, here's an album I just looked at today, and I was like, you know what? I should talk about it. I'm going to listen to it also later. The Japanese jazz and funk, Japanese jazz funk and rare groove, sixty eight to nineteen eighty. This is volume one. Get this. There's still copies floating around. This is, if you really liked, um, the jazz dispensary that came out on RSD. Uh, you're gonna love that. So okay, a few more albums, a few more heat. Keeps around ten minutes. Thumbs Carlisle. This dude rips 
plays like Jeff Healy did on a Telecaster, totally different style here. But no one talks about this guy. Straight legend. One of my secrets that I don't really like to tell anybody about, but I'm just going for it. You guys get to find out about Thumbs Carlisle. I found out about him. I got this at Recycled Records in Monterey. It just looked interesting. He had a Telecaster on his lap. I YouTubed it real quick, and I was blown away. I couldn't. It was only like 11 bucks, 11.50. And uh, it's on Gemini Records. A really clean copy, too. And so, if you find this and you like guitar, swoop it up. Speaking of guitar shredders, Extrapolation by John McLaughlin. This is a beast album. This whole album is crazy good. And all of John McLaughlin's work is really good. But this album, uh, is, I couldn't stop listening to it for like about six months. It seemed like, all right, three months. But, okay, like all year, off and on. This thing, and it's still floating around. It's just a great album. Um, if you haven't heard this one, uh, stream it. But you, I got it for like two bucks. Yeah. And I, I want to, uh, this one's a little beat up. I need to get a better copy of this. So be on the lookout for that. And then the grand finale. Drum roll, Keith Jarrett. I've already talked about this album before, but I got to talk about it again. This is such a great album. Eyes of the South. Eyes, sorry, Eyes of the South. Eyes of the Heart. It's actually a three-sided LP. I hate those, but it's super good. The uh, the song, Eyes of the Heart, one and two are very, uh, super good. I really, uh, all side one is my favorite. 17 minutes, 11 seconds long, but it is a beast of a song. Just whole album is really good. <laughs> Keith Jarrett plays soprano saxophone, which you don't usually hear him play because he's a piano player. But yeah, that's how talented he is. He can just play saxophone and stuff like that and the piano. And, uh, super good so thank you to all the subscribers that have been supporting me to the new subscribers like and subscribe if this is one of your first episodes you're watching you made it this far go support all the other channels there's a bunch of other great ones go check out it is like endless and there's people you're gonna you know the new ones are gonna be coming out every week and that's awesome so um this is i wanted to do a bigger better episode but i it's been like a week i'm like i gotta post something so this is it this is the 100th episode i'm sorry I don't have the Star Wars credits, but either way. But you know what? So for the outro, though, we will we will play something for the outro. Okay, hold on, hold on. You got Herbie Hancock Trio. We're going to outro with... Let's put it on first, and then let's see if anybody can figure it out. Because some people know about this. Oh. It's fine. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Try not to be too OCD over here. I don't think I don't think this will get flagged because it's very rare. Or right, it's not rare, it's obscure. And his Bulgarian wedding band. And the name of this album, uh, Orpheus Ascending. And I just like, Bulgarian wedding band? That says wedding band, I thought that's... Like, that's just what you... Once you are playing weddings, you're making the big bucks. It's true. It's, this is no joke. I feel like Michael Fremer showed this album on his channel. And that's how I recognize this. I could be wrong. Somebody showed this a long time ago. Well, like within the last year. It's a long time ago for me now. Who was on the Bulgarian trip? Anyone else in the VC on the Bulgarian trip? I already pulled out the Ethiopian jazz, which is fucking phenomenal. 
Japanese jazz, American jazz, but Bulgarian? They're not, they're not gonna disappoint. You gotta play that shit on drums. I dare you. Even my dog's rocking out right now. I made it to 100 episodes. If I had fireworks, I would light them right now. Um, I don't have any. Stay positive, play lots of vinyl. And uh, that's all I gotta say. Later, guys. Bye.